Hello there, welcome back. In the last video we saw that carbon atoms are simply not stable in the interstices of the body-centered cubic form of iron. In this video we're going to look at what happens if they get trapped in the structure when iron is very rapidly cooled or quenched to low temperature. We're going to see that they undergo what's called a martensitic transformation. And this type of transformation occurs not just for this system, but for other material systems as well, and it's quite important. It also forms the basis of the shape memory effect, which is a very interesting effect where materials can recover their shape when they are deformed. Enjoy the video. In the previous video, we saw that while carbon exhibits partial interstitial solubility in the FCC gamma form of iron, the so-called austenite region of solubility in the phase diagram here, it is too large to be accommodated in the much smaller interstices of the BCC alpha form of iron, which is just not stable. So what happens when the FCC austenite phase is cooled down below the FCC to BCC transition. The phase diagram tells us it should transform to the carbon-free pure BCC or alpha form of iron with the carbon atoms concentrating into a second phase, Fe3C, an iron carbide phase, which is called cementite, a ceramic with polar covalent bonding. However, this transition will take time as it requires the diffusion of carbon into the regions that form the cementite phase. So let's just review this iron carbide equilibrium transformation. Austenite accommodating up to approximately 10 atomic percent of carbon at high temperature, then at low temperature transforms to the carbon-free ferrite phase, plus the Fe3C cementite. But again, carbon must diffuse, partition, and concentrate to form carbon-rich iron carbide. And so here's a cartoon of how this transformation occurs. Here's our gamma form, our FCC form of iron, with the interstitial carbon distributed homogeneously throughout it. It must now segregate and concentrate into the regions that can form the Fe3C phase, with the alpha BCC form being essentially carbon-free. And so these rearrangements, these concentrations of carbon, require diffusion, reasonably long range, and will take time. And so the microstructure development, the growth of these new phases, which often grow side by side in these so-called lamellae structures, which we'll talk about later, is time dependent. It will depend on the cooling rate. Here are some images of the carbon steel microstructure. On the left is a micrograph after air cooling, where we can see the fine scale lamellae of the Fe3C and BCC phases that have grown side by side, a microstructural form that is called perlite. On the right is the structure after a long term annealing or heating below the transition temperature. Here, the Fe3C precipitates have grown to form almost spherical grains embedded in the alpha ferrite BCC iron matrix. Because of their shape, this microstructural form is called spheroidite. The mechanical properties of the steel respond strongly to these changes in microstructure. Alpha ferrite is soft and ductile and is strengthened by the Fe3C inclusions, which are hard and brittle and do not support any significant dislocation movement due to the polar covalent nature of their bonding. The degree of strengthening responds to the size and shape of the Fe3C precipitates, which in turn affect the total contact area of the Fe and Fe3C phases in particular affecting the area of the interfaces and grain boundaries between the two phases. What happens if instead we rapidly quench the FCC austenite phase to low temperature using a cooling rate of seconds that is just too fast to allow the carbon interstitials to escape? The carbon atoms want to be body-centered cubic, but the carbon interstitials are not stable. However, the quenching has trapped carbon in iron. 
Because they cannot escape, an accommodation or compromise is made, and the FCC structure distorts to form an elongated, tetragonal body-centered structure, where the C-axis of the body-centered cell, which we saw previously was restricting the size of the interstice, increases to allow the carbons to fit. This is called body-centered tetragonal martensite. This form of carbon steel is metastable. It is not an equilibrium phase, but nonetheless, it can be made and preserved by rapid quenching. And it turns out to be the hardest and strongest form of steel, though it is extremely brittle. The strength of martensite is associated with its distorted tetragonal cell, which has almost no well-defined or low energy slip planes and consequently very limited dislocation motion. And as we just mentioned, while it is very strong, it is very brittle. Let us take a closer look at the formation mechanism of martensite. When we look at the FCC structure, it's not immediately apparent how it could quickly transform to the BCT arrangement shown at the top right of the slide. A clue to figuring out the transition came from the recognition that a BCT-type cell was actually hidden in the FCC structure, as shown here by the atoms shaded in red. Distortions of the hidden cell are required to provide stable bond lengths for iron and for carbon, but distortions do not require diffusion, just small atom displacements. And it was recognised that this could be consistent with the martensitic transition only being observed in samples that were very rapidly quenched. In other words, such a displacement transition would be very fast. A more detailed pathway for the FCC to martensite transition emerged after it was recognized that the atom arrangements in the 110 planes of the FCC structure were identical to those in the bar 112 planes of the BCT martensite. However, these are stacked in different ways in the two structures. So now we've rotated them to be perpendicular to our screen. Let's take a look at their stacking in the FCC and BCT and see how they can convert. On the left, we see the stacking in the FCC cell. If this stacking arrangement is sheared perpendicular to these layers, we'll find that it yields the BCT structure. This shearing is diffusionless. It requires absolutely no atom diffusion whatsoever. And this is why this transition occurs incredibly fast. And indeed, the martensite structure can only be obtained through a very rapid quench. And the shearing mechanism is called the Bane mechanism. Let's highlight the speed and ease of the transition by shearing the FCC layers in real time. It is fast. Here, we sheared the structure to the right, but there is no reason why it could not also shear to the left. In fact, it can shear in both directions. And when it does, we get twinning and the formation of twin planes. These are experimental images of the microstructure of Martin site, and these provide clear evidence for this mechanism and the associated twinning. And we see the grains contain numerous planar defects associated with the twin planes. The frequency of the twinning is even more evident in this atomistic image where the separation of the twin planes is on the order of just 10 nanometers. The twinning in Martin site, however, is not just associated with the equal chances of shearing to the left or to the right, it is critical in alleviating stresses and strains that would otherwise be present in an untwinned microstructure. A shear in just one direction would cause a large change in the shape of the grain, and this would induce large and unfavorable stresses on the surrounding grains, which would have different orientations. The surrounding grains, therefore, constrain this change in shape. It is this constraint effect that induces the extensive twinning, as it allows the transition to proceed without any significant change in the shape of the grain. 
and is this extensive twinning that alleviates the stress and allows the transition to proceed with extreme rapidity. And as we've seen before, the twinning is at the angstrom level. So let's just summarize the critical role of carbon and cooling rate in iron carbon steels. On the left we have pure iron and at high temperature it forms an FCC structure. And at low temperature pure iron readily converts to its BCC form. As we add carbon at high temperature the FCC structure can accommodate approximately 8% in the octahedral interstices. However below 727 C this carbon containing FCC austenite phase must transform to accommodate the needs of iron for a lower coordination. One obvious choice is just convert to the BCC structure and keep the carbon interstices inside it, but we know they are too small. Instead, at equilibrium, in other words during slow or medium cooling or annealing, the carbon containing phase will convert to pure BCC iron with the carbon going into cementite, an Fe3C carbide. However, if we quench the structure, the carbon is trapped, the structure must distort, and it can do so through this rapid shearing mechanism to a body-centered tetragonal martensite phase, which is multiply twinned, cannot support dislocation motion, and has an extremely high hardness. Let's just then summarize the overall mechanical response to all of these transitions. As we add carbon to iron, typically the strength and hardness both increase. Carbon restricts dislocation motion in any of these phases. As we start to cool more quickly, we also increase the strength of hardness. The structures of the equilibrium phases, or specifically their microstructures, can be altered by mediating the length of the annealing below the 727 degree C transition to form so-called perlite and spheroidite types of microstructures. Those in turn allow further tailoring of the mechanical response. Conversely, as we go the other way, ductility goes down. So we will increase ductility from right to left and from bottom to top. Diffusionless phase transitions occur in many other important material systems, and they are collectively referred to as martensitic transformations. Other examples include transformations in the ZRO2 zirconia system. In alloys, these transformations also have many important applications, the most famous being shape memory alloys. The martensitic transformations are responsible for an alloy being able to remember its original shape after deformation. In the shape memory effect, a shape is defined at high temperature in the austenite, i.e. cubic, form of the structure. The shape is then cooled, goes through the martensitic transformation, and at low temperature it's multiply twinned, but this multiple twinning, as we have seen, retains the original shape. When it is bent or subject to a mechanical deformation at low temperature, the martensite starts to detwin, and associated with this is a change in shape through extensive shearing. However, when the deformed sample is reheated to high temperature, it recovers, or if you like, remembers its original shape, and spontaneously it forms the original cubic parent austenite structure which when cooled retains its recovered shape due to the martensitic twinning. And again we could go through the same process, deform this sample, reheat it, and it would again retain its original shape. In the next slide we'll take a look at a video of the shape memory effect. Let's take a look at the shape memory effect in a sample of nitinol, one of the most widely used shape memory alloys which has a transition temperature of 30 to 130 degrees C. So in this video, we start with a shape that has been defined at high temperature and retained as it cooled through the martensitic transformation. It's the shape of a paperclip. Next, we deform the paperclip at low temperature. This is detwinning and shearing the structure. And then to restore it to its prior shape, 
we see it is heated above the transition temperature, in this case just using a hairdryer, and the shape is immediately recovered. Nitinol shaped memory alloys are used in many applications, in particular in the biomedical arena. They're used as stents and catheters, which can be used to open up blocked arteries. Other applications include actuators and robotics, retractable antennas, and indeed, they're used widely in the world of magic. The Yuri Geller bent spoon was based on a nitinol shaped memory alloy.